Hey, Dave here from Excel Jet. So in our last video, I looked at the question, why pivot tables? And I focused on speed. I showed you how a pivot table will beat even an advanced user in Excel every time. And in that video, we kept a scorecard and we kept track of the clicks and shortcuts and formulas that you need to build a report both with and without pivot tables. And it's not really even close. So check that out if you haven't seen that video. In this video, I want to explore some more ways that you can use pivot tables to analyze different kinds of data. And in particular, I want to show you how pivot tables are excellent at answering questions about data, even ugly transactional data that nobody else wants to touch. In fact, pivot tables are so good at this that once you get the hang of using pivot tables to analyze raw data, you'll find that you've become a bit of a data snob. Somebody will be trying to give you some crappy pre-formatted report to work with, and you'll be asking, can I please just get the raw data? So I know talk is cheap, and maybe you don't believe me, so let's go look at some examples. In this example, we're going to analyze voting results with the pivot table. In the data, we have the fields name, gender, age, and vote. And you can see there are three voting options. A, B, and C. First, how many people voted? By counting name, you can see that we have 300 votes total. Next, what was the winning vote? The winning vote is option B with 156 votes. What's a breakdown by percentage? Option A got 31%, option C got 17%, and option B is the winner with 52%. We could easily graph this with a pivot chart. What's the breakdown by gender? By adding gender as a column label, we can easily get a full breakdown. Finally, what's the breakdown by age? To get a breakdown by age, we can group by number. Now we have a clean breakdown by age and brackets of 10 years. You can see that grouping by number is a powerful and cool pivot table feature. In this example, we're going to look at sales data by salesperson. In the data, we have the fields name, date, amount, and region. To start off, let's look at total sales by region. This would be easy to graph in a pivot chart as well. Next. What are total sales by month and year? To answer this, we'll need to group by date. How about total sales by salesperson in 2014? The easiest way to build this report is to set year as a report filter. Next, what are the five best and worst months in 2014? This is actually a good job for a conditional formatting, which hooks into pivot tables nicely. I'll use green for the top five months and red for the bottom five months. Finally, for the last question, what are the top 10 salespeople in 2014? Notice the conditional formatting automatically adjusts to show the top and bottom months for this group only. In this example, we're going to use a pivot table to analyze instrument measurements. 
This data consists of temperature readings taken in a greenhouse over a period of days. We have date, time, temperature in Celsius, and temperature in Fahrenheit. So first, how many readings do we have? You can see that we have over 9,000 readings total. How many readings per day is this? If I add date as a row label, we get a breakdown by day. And you can see that on most days, we have 720 readings. If you want to see a breakdown by hour, you could use time as a column label. You can see that there's generally 30 readings per hour, so one reading every two minutes. Next, what are the maximum and minimum temperatures recorded each day? We'll need two instances of a temperature field, and then we'll need to change the calculation for each. This data would also work well as a pivot chart. Next, what's the average temperature at each hour of each day? For that, I can change the calculation for the minimum field, and then add time as a column label. Finally, one last question. How can these temperatures be visualized with color? To achieve this, we can use a color scale applied with conditional formatting. The result is a colorful table that clearly shows which times during the day have warmer and cooler temperatures. Okay, so I hope you enjoyed that tour of some different pivot table examples and you're starting to feel more comfortable with the idea of analyzing data with a pivot table. You can analyze almost any kind of data that you can get your hands on with a pivot table. I've really just scratched the surface in these examples today. So whether you're in management or sales or marketing or science or customer support or you're retired and just want to analyze your monthly expenses, you can do it with a pivot table. And what's cool about pivot tables is that you can roll your own reports. You don't need to go to somebody in IT and ask them to do it for you. And in fact, pivot tables are a great way to prototype reports to show somebody else what you need built or what you're looking for. So the bottom line is that pivot tables are an incredibly powerful tool. And if you're not already using them in Excel, you should be. There's just no better way to quickly present and understand data. So the bottom line is that if you're not already using pivot tables in Excel, you should be. There's just no better way to quickly understand and present data. And pivot tables really give you a competitive edge today because there's more data available than ever before. And that's a trend that will certainly continue. So I'll be back in a few days with our next video in this series on pivot tables. And in the meantime, think about the type of data that you have available that you could analyze with a pivot table. And feel free to leave your thoughts and questions about pivot tables in the comment area below this video. I'll see you soon.